I want, Will, I want to thank you, and really, I want to thank all of you that worked so hard on the Menhaden. Did I say it properly? They're always on me for mispronouncing the fish. Uh, but we know each other, the fish and I. You know. <laughs> So what are, what are names and pronunciation between friends? I have this song going through my head right now. I'm thinking of Tom Wisner singing, How does it feel to be a fish Swimming around in a great big dish Watch them swim Fish is a... I won't go into the rest of it. No, no. Look, it's wonderful to see all you here. So you've been knocking on doors all day? Seeing your legislators in action, that positive, forward-moving Maryland that's always growing jobs, growing opportunity, and growing greener day by day. That's the goal, right? Well, look, I want to thank so many of you that worked so hard. This uh, turnaround and the, the, the choices we make with regard to the most important fish in the sea was not something that happened by chance. It did not happen by accident. How many of you have seen the movie Lincoln? You know, when he's going every place and calling people up, boy, they didn't have phones then. He's trying to get everybody's vote. I went to see that with my family, and I turned to them, and I said, this looks a lot like work. <laughs> and it was work. I mean, twice they came at us with those votes, but I really, you know, as I accept this award, I do so on behalf of, of other governors up and down the Atlantic seaboard as well, and their people and their neighbors who, like you, organized to, under, to, uh, to step in and to act in a, a more sustainable way with regard to the Manhattan. Uh, Governor uh, Deval Patrick in Massachusetts, uh, Governor Malloy in Connecticut, uh, Governor Bev Perdue in North Carolina, now that uh, the happiest of us, she's a former governor of, uh, of North Carolina. I also want to thank the members of our legislature who backed us up. Uh, uh, the chair, uh, and Senator Joan Carter Conway is here with us today. Any, any other delegates or senators? Um, here. Let me also uh, acknowledge a couple other folks. Bill Goldsboro, along with our fisheries team at DNR. Thank you, Bill, so very, very much for leading our charge. You did an awesome job. Big round of applause for Bill. <laughs> and how about Allison Prost? Is Allison Prost here? Right Allison, good job. Big round of applause for Allison Prost. And everyone at the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, and, uh, and Will, thank you. Uh, in our state, you know, in the toughest of times, a lot of the other states are peeling back, saying, oh, we can't afford to do this, we can't afford to do that. We've had the same conversations here, but we decided that we could not afford to move back, that we needed to move forward. And when times are down and when times are tough, that also can happen to be the best times to be able to purchase valuable open space. Uh, for the, to preserve the future and to preserve that land for our future. Uh, we've done so many good things in these last few years. Sometimes we lose track of them under the tarp that has been the economic challenges and the suffering that so many families have gone through uh, with uh, job losses and with home foreclosures. But uh, we have actually made a lot of progress in these years, and we can't let up. We've spent a lot of time putting together the common platforms that allow us to move forward in really life-giving and, and sustaining ways for generations to come. But while those platforms, based at Greenprint and others, make the progress possible, uh, it's actually the people that make it happen. And that's why your work's so very important. The numbers of people that have come in here tonight, the numbers of people that you go home to, the numbers of people that are on your email list, the numbers of people that you can contact and mobilize, because guess what? The fundamentals of democracy are the same today as they were in Lincoln's time. The leaders can only go as far as an educated citizenry will support and allow them to go. There's a dynamic, yes. There's a creative tension, yes. But you can't have progress unless citizens are also growing in their awareness, in their understanding, in their compassion, in their mindfulness of the choices we make with regard to the land and the air and the water that we use for our short time on this planet and that we need to preserve for those who come after us. Um, so look, we've done some great things together. Uh, we, in Maryland, we choose to create jobs and expand opportunity. We choose to innovate, educate, and rebuild. 
And because we choose to do all those things, we also choose to protect the air we breathe, the land we use, and the health of our families, and the bay that we love. All of these things go together. Uh, we've set a number of public goals, and quite frankly, uh, some of them were hitting our benchmarks, and some of them, especially on the energy front, were falling short, and we need to do better. We've done some great things to set up the parameters and the guidelines, if you will, that uh, will allow us to grow in cleaner and more sustainable ways. But as Drew was just showing me on the postcard, there are some county councils throughout our state who say, we don't give a damn. Uh, we don't care about saving the bay. We're about paving the bay. Don't tell us how to use our land up in here. But you know what? I'm guessing that there are people in Frederick and there are people in Charles, and there are people in Cecil, and there are people in Queen Anne's, and there are people in Wicomico who care just as much as you do about the health of their waters and the health of the bay. So we need to make sure that an educated electorate, an electorate that is aware, asks their county commissioners why they're still going down this path of putting in septic McMansion fields when we all understand now how bad it ultimately is for the health of the other living systems of this area upon, who's, um, upon whom our very lives depend as well. We've done good things bringing the blue crab back from uh, its steep decline. We've done some good things uh, putting science first and actually agreeing with Virginia <laughs> that we need to restore and revive the native oyster. Uh, we've turned the corner and created some common platforms so that we can accelerate oyster aquaculture and, and take greater stewardship of the bay bottom. But we still have so much more work to do. So the, the good work that we've done to date in these tough times, including the preservation of open space, the record numbers of farmers that are signing up for cover crops, and uh, the additional dollars and the... Uh, uh, in the um, trust fund. Uh, all of these things are not reason to you know, shoot off a confetti cannon. I know that, and you know that, but they should be reasons that encourage us to, to work even harder. You know, we have a role to play. We might not be able to, to uh, control what other states do uh, when they make choices, but we can act like the, like the heart of a country that's still uh, growing and moving forward and, and open to more sustainable ways of acting. We have to do it, and that's Maryland's role. That's always been our role, and I think we should all consider ourselves very lucky that we get to live here in, in this place, so close to the land, so close to the water and so close to the other living beings that we share this planet with. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs>